Hey folks, Matthew Lanigan here with Baywa RE. We're just going to give it another minute here, just see people logging in, and we'll be back with you here very shortly. Thanks. Hi right, folks, Matthew Lanigan here again with Baywa RE. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer here at Baywa. Really appreciate y'all taking time uh, to spend with us and our fantastic partner, uh, Enphase Energy. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes. This will be recorded. Uh, it'll be shared on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't signed up already, we'd really appreciate if you went over there and signed up for the YouTube channel. You can see this presentation and uh, all other presentations we've done there. Uh, we will be taking questions. Uh, we like to take them as they come, so please uh, feel free. You'll see the chat box in the bottom right corner. Put them in and we'll uh, be sure to answer them as soon as we can for you. Uh, continuing education is very important to Baywa internally and we're really happy to be able to share that with our uh, customer base as well. So once again, really appreciate y'all being here. I uh, just want to double uh, check the test, uh, test, sorry, test the chat box. So if I could maybe just have somebody reach out and say hi, and we'll just make sure that's working before we get going. Great, fantastic. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce Ashi with uh, Enphase. He's uh, the regional sales manager. Ashi. Hey guys, thanks, uh, thanks Matt for having me on. Uh, my name is Ashi Levinson. I'm the regional sales manager for and I do cover uh, Canada, no matter which coast you are on. I, I am your regional rep. Uh, and if you can just go ahead and confirm that my screen is sharing on, on your end, if Matt or somebody. We see Baywa and Faze on the screen right now. Perfect. There we go. Uh, so, <clears throat> so again, thank you for having me on today. I'm the uh, end phase rep, as I mentioned. I've been with Enphase for coming up on four years now, so chance I've met some of you. If I haven't yet met you, and this is the first time you're hearing my voice, please reach out to me. Uh, you can get my contact information from Baywa. I don't have it on the screen, um, but please you know, reach out separately, introduce yourself. I'd love to help you. My, my goal and my role is to help you guys be successful with Enphase. Uh, so I'll be your, your main point contact uh, person here at Enphase internally and can connect you with any department as needed, you know, engineering for technical support, anything like that. Uh, we want to make sure you are successful with, with Enphase. Um, so again, great, great to meet you all. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to jump in. I know today we're going to be covering uh, a little bit about, you know, overview of our, our new microinverter line, the IQH, which some of you already have been using as well as cover some of the interesting configurations we can uh, we can accomplish with those IQ8s. There are some pretty unique things. 
uh, as well as touch a bit about, uh, upon stories. So uh, as we're going, as Matt mentioned, please feel free to put questions in the chat. Uh, we'll do our best to help answer any of them. If there's questions we don't know the answer to, uh, we'll make sure to note them down and, and get back to you in, in, as soon as we can. So real quick, who is Enphase? Again, some of you may know and may be more familiar than others. Uh, we are a, the world leader in microinverter manufacturing. So we, we've been around since 2006. We're based in California, right in the Bay Area. Uh, so if you ever are in the San Francisco area, we're just south of that in Fremont. Uh, please feel free to drop by our office. Uh, but we are based in California. We've been uh, shipping microinverters uh, for, for many, many years now. So we have millions and millions of these things deployed. Uh, it's globally, we have them installed all over the world. Uh, so I know it says 58 million. That was when we made the slides is probably well more than that at this point. Uh, but we have a lot of product all over the world. Um, we are a publicly traded company. So we are, we are a Fortune 500 company or S&P 500 five company. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, we, you know, it's been, a, it's been quite a journey since 2006. Um, our founders really wanted to change the landscape with how solar, solar was being done, right? Traditionally, everything was string inverters uh, when the industry was getting started. And our founders, you know, they thought there, there's gotta be a better way to help convert DC to AC for, uh, for homeowners and for these systems. And that's, that's where they came around with the microinverter. And so if we're looking at, at what is an end phase system, we, we are a, a microinverter based system. It's a distributed architecture. So what you have is you have microinverters on the roof underneath each and every panel, uh, but we also now have batteries, right? We've been working in the battery space for a few years. We also have called the IQ battery and everything is integrated into our our app. You guys as installers are able to monitor your entire fleet of installs all through all through our portal and homeowners get a really easy to use monitoring interface all you know web or or on their mobile device called the Enphase app and everything is really tied together but as a manufacturer we're not only doing the hardware but we also design our, our own software for operating the the systems as well as monitoring the systems. Right, so it's an all-in-one solution, one provider uh, for you guys to be able to offer your, your homeowners and your customers. If we're taking a look at what's new, right? So our, our IQ8 is our current line. It is our newest microinverter, and it's been out for a little bit now. So again, some of you have been uh, probably a little more familiar with it than others, uh, but this is our newest microinverter, and we're very excited about this one because it's, it's special, it's different than our previous generations. You might have done some work with IQ6s or IQ7s more recently in the past few years. Some of you maybe have installed some of our earliest products in the M series, but our IQ8 is very different. And the reason is, is because uh, it's really the chip that's inside of it. The chip that's inside of it allows our microinverter to be grid agnostic. And what I mean by that is that the microinverter is able to convert DC to AC, even in the absence of, of a grid signal. Right? Well, we'll take a, a little bit closer look at what that actually means. And the way we're able to do that is because the chip that's inside of the IQ8 is a lot faster. It does a lot more processing and a lot more quickly than previous generations. So it's responding to changes in its environment within nanoseconds, right? So it's a lot faster on, uh, the computation side and allows for some really interesting configurations, which is what we're going to take a look at today. For those who have been familiar with the IQ7, which is our, our prior generation of microinverters, you'll know that our IQ8 line, we do have uh, kind of the IQ8 equivalents of the IQ7. So from a power class perspective, we have all the same as the IQ7 line in the IQ8s, but then we actually have the additional higher power IQ8H. Uh, so depending on which module you're using to install, which DC uh, wattage class you're in, you'll be able to pair it perfectly with one of our IQ8s and get a really good, nice DC to AC ratio within, uh, within the aspect that you're going for, right? So very commonly people were using the IQ7 plus. Uh, so the IQ8 plus is kind of the natural equivalent to that. 
but we are seeing you know the module side modules are moving up in the wattage class so it's probably not uncommon for people to start looking at something more high power like the iq8m 8a or 8h and you see the ac outputs right here on the right hand column but this is all on our data sheets you don't have to memorize anything uh, but again as you're moving up in wattage class on the on the dc module side we've got a good microinverter pairing for you and really what's made us so special on the uh on the inverter side and really how enphase has grown tremendously over the past uh let's call it five ten years is really based on our reliability so uh, we have a 25 year product warranty and that means our product is designed and designed to last 25 years which is how most people are looking at solar systems these days right all of our modules have a 25 year warranty and we match that on the microinverter side uh, but we also have the lowest uh, defect rate in the industry. So our defect rate at this point is 0.05% for the for the micros, which comes out to about one in 2000, right? So it's a pretty powerful graphic. You guys are putting micros and, and inverters up on, on roofs. Ideally, you don't want to have to be going back to, to do any service work. You want to be installing, you want to be getting referrals, you want happy customers, and you're able to accomplish that with a with a high reliability reliability product right so when we're talking about our microinverters we have an industry leading warranty and an industry leading reliability reliability rate so when we're talking about that iq8 i mentioned that it's grid agnostic right so what what does that allow it allows for some interesting configurations and we have a number of different ones some you're familiar with and, and others you might not be as familiar with we'll take a look at all those in a moment so just regarding end phase nomenclature we have specific terminology for some configurations and sometimes people call them different things but uh we can first and foremost do solar only this is just your standard grid tied pv system right so you install your solar you're offsetting the energy consumption from uh from that homeowner's utility and that's it right when the grid goes out your solar goes out it's rapid shutdown compliant nothing particularly unique there uh, that's what most solar is these days, right? And then we move into the realm of backup. I'm going to jump over here to the the right two columns first. We have uh, we have battery backup, right? So you can a lot of you might get the question from a homeowner in the consultation where they say, "Oh, I'm getting solar, right? That means I'll have power when the grid goes out." And you have to say, "No, Mr. or Mrs. Homeowner, actually your your system is grid tied. If you want backup, we need to add batteries, right?" And so Enphase does have battery solutions. Uh, home essentials backup is our terminology for uh, critical load backup, a, you know, a smaller battery system backing up just select critical loads in the house and full energy independence is what we call a whole home backup and being able to back up any load in your house with the battery that you're sizing for that homeowner. And so, so both of those are, are forms of battery backup. But what's cool is this, this second column here, we call it sunlight backup. So something unique with our microinverters, our IQ8 line, is that you can actually provide a PV only backup for homeowners. We call that sunlight backup. So it's kind of an in between between your solar only or your grid tied solar and your battery backup because you are able to provide backup for a homeowner with your solar and no batteries. Now, there are asterisks and caveats there that we and design considerations that we'll, we'll take a look at, but we can provide that, and that's very unique. You know, I, this is a, a, the type of configuration that will work a lot better for certain homeowners than others. So it's definitely our job as industry professionals to be talking with homeowners and understanding what's their goal when they're talking with you about solar and, and maybe interested in backup to identify which of these configurations would really be ideal for them. But they can be all be accomplished with our solution. So to take a little bit of a closer dive and then look into all these starting with solar only again this is grid tied solar I'm, uh, expecting many of you are probably pretty familiar with this uh, if you're new to the industry you know we can definitely get you trained up on, on solar only as well uh, but we're not going to spend too much time on this today you know this is you got your solar system it's wired to the house and you have the power coming in from the utility as well but if there's a, a grid outage with the utility your solar system will shut down and it's rapid shutdown compliant um, and there, there's no form of backup there for a homeowner but they are generating their own power and energy and you know reducing their their utility bill as a result 
When you want to add any element of backup, you, you do need to add a few different components to the system. First and foremost, you need to add a system controller. A system controller, the proper terminology for it is a microgrid interconnection device or an MID. Uh, people also, I hear people calling it a smart switch as well, uh, but it's an MID and it's going to allow you to isolate the PV, the loads in the house and batteries, if there are any on the system, isolate all that and form a microgrid so none of the energy generated or being utilized will ever flow to the utility, which would be uh, against code. So you, you first and foremost will need a system controller. And then we also have uh, load controllers, which we'll take a look at those as well, but those will allow you in, an, in a microgrid environment to be able to more effectively utilize the power of and an essential loads panel, when you're doing a uh, uh, sunlight backup, it's required because we actually, for sunlight backup only, limit the backup availability to four circuits in the house. And we'll take a look at why, but it's not a whole home backup scenario. So just to take a look at how everything would be wired, this is very simplistic. This is not, you know, uh, full-fledged engineering design right here, but you're gonna have your PV wired into your combiner box the same way you would for your solar only jobs and for those who might not be familiar with with uh, all of our our component names the combiner box uh includes our gateway which is our our monitoring device it's going to allow everything to be connected to the cloud so you're going to have your your iq eats wired to your combiner box that's all the same but now your combiner box is actually going to be wired into our system controller uh our system controller right here and then the critical loads that you're gonna to wanna to back up during that grid outage will be wired into an essential loads panel also connected to the system controller. That way, during a grid outage, the system controller too has a relay that's gonna open up and you're able to form a microgrid where your PV is able to supply you know, power to, to these critical loads. And what's really cool here, if you think about it is, your, the amount of energy you're using or the amount of power demand in the house during that time is fluctuating as the homeowner might be turning lights on and off, plugging things in and out, right? So the amount of energy or power that they need at any moment in time does fluctuate. But assuming that there's enough sunlight available for, for that system, our IQ8s are able to throttle the power output up and down almost instantaneously, like it's, it's incredibly rapidly fast because of that chip that's inside of them, right? So we'll take a look Actually, at it. We got a couple yeah. of questions here. Uh, oh, perfect. Can, can you install an IQ system off-grid? Uh, great question. Not yet, no. Uh, and I say not yet, I don't have anything immediate on the roadmap. Um, it's something I can look into, but no, you can't. So I, I hear, and that's, and I mentioned nomenclature. When, if you ever hear anybody at Enphase saying off-grid, we're really referring to microgrid. These do need a grid connection for commissioning, uh, whether it's you know solar only or uh, sunlight backup or battery backup. So these are not for your no grid connection off-grids. Great question. Thank you. Um, yeah, keep the questions coming. So with a uh, sunlight backup, Again, we restrict this configuration to backing up a max of four circuits, four 240 volt circuits. Uh, technically, you can, I mean, in theory, you could size to put whatever you want on there, but realistically, I would say these are the loads right here on the left. If someone's going sunlight backup, these are the loads that I would back up your fridge, your Wi Fi, lights, fans, outlets, things like that. What I would look at this as this is a, you know, a critical load backup. This is, hey, I expect the utility to get power back pretty, you know, within a few hours or relatively quickly. I just want to make sure my food stays cold. I work from home, so I want to be able to plug in my computer. I want my Wi-Fi to go, right? But I'm not expecting uh, or trying to power too much, right? Um, so this that's how I would look at it. And, you know, when you're sizing backup, it should be a conversation. What does a homeowner want to back up? But if they're choosing some like backup, you really want to make sure that, that you're, you're you're, you're using lower power loads. The reason is, is because you want to make sure that you have a pretty wide time frame throughout the day where you're likely going to have enough power to power those loads. So just what do I mean by that? If you're looking at, uh, you know, this is a, a very, this is a sample, a radiance curve. We've got a nice sunny production day. This is what our, our output looks like from the solar system, right? You've got sun's rising in the morning, you got low production, then the afternoon you got 
great production. It's a nice sunny day. And then in the evening, the sun sets and your, your power starts to go down as a result. Right. So that's pretty predictable if, if there's good sun. But how do people use energy in their house and how do they use their, their loads? They're turning lights on and off. They might be, again, running the coffee machine, running whatever they, they run. And the power demand just goes up and down as they use the loads in their house. But with sunlight backup, because there's no battery in this configuration, the second that you need more demand, power demand in the house versus what you have available from PV, that system is going to shut down, right? There, there's no buffer there. There's no battery. So for it to work, you need the, the red line here, which is the power demand of the house. You need that to be underneath the power output for, uh, for the solar array, right? So if we're looking at um, you know, something heavy, like if someone says, I want to back up my AC, right? My air conditioner unit or my well pump or something that might have a, a big draw in the beginning as it's turning on, you know, it has that inrush, it has that surge. Odds are that surge might overpower what's available from sunlight, right? So we, we, we I, I don't think you would ever hear anyone at Enphase say, hey, yeah, let's do sunlight backup for, for NAC or, or motor load. It just likely isn't a, gonna be a good configuration. So when you're when you're putting just the low loads on there, when you're putting just you know some lights, some outlets, fridge, things like that, you're keeping the power demand this line here as low as possible, which means you have the widest uh, amount of time throughout the day where you're likely going to have more solar production than you have demand in the house. So uh, if you have questions on that, please let me know. Um, but again, the lower you can keep this line, odds are the 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 more time throughout the day you'll be able to use a PV only system. And I, you know, I don't know where everyone is located uh, offhand who's attending. I live in Chicago, Illinois, so you know we have a fair amount of cloudy days, right? So a solar production curve that looks like this, we do get that, but it's not it's not by any means guaranteed either, right? So if we're taking a look at how, how does it work when we don't necessarily have uh, a perfectly sunny day because some of you probably are already thinking that's great that's a nice sunny day we're not in arizona we're in i don't know uh newfoundland or wherever you know so so how does that work well this is an example of a less than ideal production day let's call it overcast rainy whatever it may be right so your your production isn't great and your power demand you, know, you still want to plug in your your phone run your coffee machine do all that stuff but odds are it's gonna turn off a lot more throughout the day than it would on a nice sunny day. And this is where our, our load controllers come into play. Uh, if you recall, uh, we do have load controller units. Each of those units uh, has the ability to turn on and off up to two circuits, uh, right? So you can put two of those on, on any backup system. And in a scenario like this, when the system shuts down because it's, you know, there's too much demand from the house versus what's available from solar, our load controllers are actually gonna turn, it, the system's gonna turn off, and then our load controllers are gonna turn those four circuits on, but one circuit at a time, right? You might have enough power to turn on one of those four circuits or two of those four circuits, so on and so forth. So it's gonna turn them on one at a time. And if it turns on one, then two, and then tries turning on three, but then the system shuts down again, it knows, okay, only turn on one and two, right? And it'll periodically try to uh, test to make sure, hey, maybe we can get more of those loads on versus not, uh, but it's going to, do that kind of automatically for the homeowner. I believe it'll try each load every about 20 seconds or so to see if it can get a, a little more. But th those load controllers are gonna manage that system. So it'll help a little bit in the evening, but it'll also help a bit on uh, on cloudy days without without great production, right? Because again, we're we're not uh, immune to that. That, that. That's definitely a relatively common scenario in much of the, the region. Um, I'll pause there if, if anyone has questions on sunlight yeah, backup. A follow up, Ashi, uh, to the can you install an IQ system off grid? Uh, John asks, uh, could you commission it and then remove the grid connection? I mean, for AC loads during the day, et cetera. So I think you went through that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's not a configuration we would support. I, I, we can support extended grid outages. So if, if the grid was just out and then unfortunately never came back, the system would in theory operate, right? So, it, um, but it, it's not a scenario, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't sub recommend that. We, we always want a grid connection as, as possible. 
Um, if you have specific questions, it sounds like that might have come from a John. John, if you have specific questions or, or configurations you want to look at, we can definitely get you in touch with an engineer. Uh, but we recommend uh, disconnecting the utility permanently from that system after commissioning. Yeah, that's it at the moment. Okay, perfect. So, and well, well, I guess that's a it's good kind of segue into backup in general, right? So. Uh, if you are not yet familiar with our, our batteries, um, we are working right now uh, with our, it's called the AccuBattery 3 and 3T and the, and the 10T, so it's a 10, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second, uh, but it's a, it's a stackable unit, right? And so what I mean by that is, you know, we have a base unit, uh, which is a, a small little battery bank, uh, and you can expand that to really get a system size as needed for the homeowner. But that's a good segue for, for homeowners who are saying, you know, I, I love the idea of backup, but I want to power more than four circuits. Or, you know, heck, a lot of my uh, grid outages happen during a snowstorm and I'm, there would be no PV production anyways, or at night or whatever it may be. Okay, those are good candidates to talk about storage, right? Because what is a battery? A battery is an on-demand DC source. Right, you've got your stored DC in your battery. Uh, we'll take a look at how ours work, but it's on-demand energy. So no matter what time of day, what time of year, they're able to tap into their battery. And that way, even if it's at night, they can run some loads, so on and so forth. And they can use their power. And then what's, again, special about our IQ8s is that the batteries are running, but the IQ8s during the daytime, if there's sun, will turn on and will add power to that system to help power more loads, but then also go and recharge the batteries so that they can continue to use them overnight, right? So our, our base, our smallest possible base unit, we call the, ba the IQ battery three, or you'll see it's called the three T on a lot of uh, the sales sheets. It's, it's, uh, it's the new thinner version, uh, but we also have the IQ battery 10 and 10 T, which if you can use your imagination, this is a wider unit than that three. It's really three of our threes, but on hanging on one bracket under a bigger case. And you can stack these up to 40 kilowatt hours. So you can scale a system as high as 40 kilowatt hours or four of the tens. The threes alone are very small and I don't expect anyone's gonna really be selling a battery system with just an IQ battery three on it or even two of those. Um, but they are good building blocks. Typically what we see is people selling the IQ battery 10 and 10T as a base storage system for a homeowner, and then using threes or tens to expand that system uh, based on what the homeowner is trying to power during a grid outage or based on how many kilowatt hours of storage they need, right? Uh, so so you, you, can expand, um, you, you can expand these systems. And so what's really important with regards to any of these systems, solar only as well, but I think a lot of us have a good handle <clears throat> on, on how to set expectations for solar. It's, hey, our software is expecting this many kilowatt hours of production a year, right? That, that's relatively straightforward. But when you talk about backup, whether it's sunlight backup or battery backup, a lot of homeowners don't necessarily understand how these systems work. And they might just say, yeah, I wanna back everything up, right? Um, and not saying that you can't back everything up depending on the size of the house, uh, but you know, again, batteries have limited output and limited capacity. And you really need to be thinking about how to size the battery system with regards to, okay, how much do I need a power at any given moment? How much surge might I expect at any moment? And can my battery handle that surge? As well as how long of an outage does a homeowner anticipate and do I have enough capacity in my battery to power me through that outage as well, right? So using those factors, that's where you would say anywhere from like a, a super small battery up to a fairly large size battery system for the homeowner. Uh, you can expand how, however much you want up, you know, within this scale, but having that conversation with the homeowner is pretty, pretty important there. Uh, and we do have some free online sizing tools. Uh, I don't think I have them built into this slide deck, but maybe at, at the end we can, I can pull up in that, that monitor as well and we can walk through the sizing tool. So that takes the gap out of sizing uh, for you. So, um, 
So sizing sizing that is pretty uh, is pretty vital. But again, you know, a homeowner is not going to get a whole home backup on a, on a small battery either. So you got to make sure. And Ashy, uh, another question: Are these allowed to be located within a house such as the attached garage? Is there a limit to size within the house or living space? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So I, I believe the code in Canada might be a little different too with regards to where uh, you are allowed to put storage versus not. And that I'm not an expert on the Canadian code. So, so the garage is, is still greenlit. The garage is greenlit, yeah. So so we do have a temperature range, um, which is I, I think most batteries on the market have more or less the same operating temperature range. Um, let me pull that open real quick. And they're not permitted in the home, but they're permitted in the garage. Not not in a livable space, correct. So garage, and if you you were allowed, you could put them in a basement or utility room, but not the living room or anything like that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, just to quickly touch upon generator integration, uh, we do allow generator integration. So the generator uh, will, so, I mean, traditionally, if someone is doing solar and storage and wants to integrate a generator, typically what you would see is that you would have this transfer switch kind of upstream of whatever gateway they'd be using or MID they'd be using, uh, so that if they are using their solar plus storage and then for whatever reason, they uh, run out of storage and there's no solar, that switch will then switch to the generator and the generator would take on uh, powering those loads. So that's typically what you would see uh, with many solar storage generator setups. Our, ours is different. So the generator actually integrates directly into our IQ system controller and is able to run in parallel with the solar and PV. Um, so there, there's a few cool things about this, but before, first and foremost, we have certification training for all of our battery and backup jobs. And we also have a generator training. So before trying to integrate a generator, please make sure you're going through the generator course on the university. If you need help finding it, please let me know. I believe it's about 30 minute course, uh, but it'll help you walk through this configuration. And we do have a list of compatible generators for this integration. So most of the standards, your, your uh, Generac, Kohler, Briggs and Stratton, and many, many of the most common generators are approved and on that list. Uh, but please make sure you're doing the, the course on the university as well as confirming that the generator you are trying to integrate is on that compatibility list. But where we see some really cool things is this generator can be integrated, it can help power the loads, but it can also just be helped to, you know, help recharge the battery. Let's say the grid is out and you're relying on your backup and you drain your battery overnight. You know, the, the IQ8s will turn on the PV array the next day. You know, we, we have that black start capability, uh, but if you're draining your battery overnight and there's still a few hours before the morning, your generator can kick on and, and even recharge your battery. So you can have it programmed. Hey, when my battery hits state of charge, let's call it 20%, turn on my generator and you know charge my battery until it hits 40% or something like that, and then turn back off, right? So you can toggle to have that generator only turn on in certain scenarios, uh, but it is there if homeowners want it. Uh, I don't know how common or not this is in, in Canada, so feel free to let me know if you're seeing this in your area. Uh, where I live in Chicago and in, in the Midwest and the US, this is very common. A lot of homes already have generators that are already looking to add solar and storage. And so having that integration is, is a really nice feature and it is available, right? It's not something that's coming in the future, it is available. Uh, but again, please make sure you've gone through the certification training in general, but specifically for generators. Um, and in general, they can be more complex to integrate. So, you know, utilize us as a resource. We have an amazing engineering department that'll help review plan sets with you, help talk to you, help, help through any commissioning kinks that, that you might need for a generator integration, uh, but it is available and uh, it's, it's pretty unique. Um, <clears throat> it, it is pretty unique in that sense. So I'm, I'm gonna quickly pause there uh, to see if anyone has, has questions on that. Okay. Not anything at the moment, Ashley. Feel okay. Perfect. So um, I'm gonna quickly touch upon uh, if if you've seen any of our our announcements. Um, if you've seen any announcements from Enphase, you might have seen that we did announce we are moving to our our new battery solution as well. I want to preface this with 
We are still in the process of getting this, this device certified for Canada. So this isn't hitting uh, the Canadian shelves the same exact time as the US, but hopefully only a month or two later, we are working hard to, to get it certified. Uh, but I just want to review it as well because it is out there. Homeowners are asking about it. You may have seen it. So I did want to touch upon it as well. Uh, when we're talking about the, the new battery system, we are calling it the IQ Battery 5P. We'll take a look at what that is. Uh, in, insulation wise, it's very, it's almost identical to the 10Ts and the 3Ts that you have available through Bewa today. Um, it's a little bit different form factor, which we'll talk about. Also, real quick note, uh, I don't have separate slides for it, but we also have EV chargers now. We did acquire a company called Clipper Creek about a year and a half ago, and uh, they were uh, one of the biggest EV charging manufacturers, uh, and they have an incredibly robust product. We acquired it, and we actually integrated it into our system. So you can now actually get Enphase EV chargers that all integrate for the homeowner within their monitoring app. Uh, so, um, you know, please let us know if you have questions on which EV charger is the right one for your homeowner, uh, but or which part number to look for, but, but we do have that as well. So what's different for the IQ Battery 5P uh, when it is available in Canada, which hopefully will be very soon. Uh, the biggest difference is that we're moving to a different base unit. Uh, so before I mentioned we have the three T's and you can stack those and, and get those into a a 10T for a 10 kilowatt hour battery, uh, and you can stack that all the way up to 40 kilowatt hours. So now our, our base unit is a five kilowatt hour base unit right here, uh, but it actually has the same amount of power as our, our current 10, right? So we're doubling the power per kilowatt hour. And what that really allows for, for you guys to do is to be able to power more loads in the house with less storage, with smaller battery uh, base units, uh, so you can get a little more for the homeowner during those grid outages without needing to stack quite as many batteries. So uh, so we are very excited for it. And again, hopefully coming to Canada uh, very soon. Um, and also just with regards to an installation perspective, what's a little bit different about this is that we do have a, uh, a floor mount option coming as well. So traditionally batteries are mounted on the walls. Uh, that's typically where they'll be, but you know we do have a floor mount. So even if they're going in the garage, if there's for whatever reason limited wall space, uh, they can be mounted onto the floor, uh, onto the floor there as well. So again, I don't I don't want to talk about the 5P too too much. We do have updated uh, design trainings and installation trainings uh, for these, so you can start to get an understanding of how to design and install with these as well on our Enphase University. Um, but please uh, please note that again, this, this is not available in Canada this month, but hopefully, hopefully very soon. Um, <clears throat> but in the end of the day, for the homeowner, what you're getting with an Enphase system is you're getting an all-in-one solution, right? You're getting microinverters on the roof that are converting all that DC that you're putting up on their array into usable AC. Uh, if you're familiar with Enphase, you're familiar that, right, uh, you have a distributed architecture. What does that mean? There's no single point of failure in your in your DC conversion over to AC on, on the microinverter side. Um, you have storage for the homeowner available. We have EV chargers. Everything can be viewed for the homeowner on one app. They don't need to switch platforms. They have one system, one monitoring device, and one warranty provider, one phone call, right? Like if there's ever an issue down the road, you know, if they're calling you, you have one phone call, it's just our CS team and, you know, we, we pick up the phone in under a minute. So you're going to get on with a live human being uh, in under a minute or a homeowner sometimes even calling if they have issues and then we'll talk to them too. But it's a really easy to use monitoring portal, very easy to use interface where they see the whole system. Where is energy coming from at any given moment? Where is it going to? We have consumption monitoring, uh, which comes in every single one of our combiner boxes. We have those consumption CTs so that a homeowner can see, oh, hey, what am I consuming as well, right? A lot of homeowners, they get solar, they know that they're gonna produce their own energy. They might start using more energy as a result. Maybe they'll, you know, hey, their family could be growing, whatever it may be, they start using more energy and then they say, hey, you know, why am I getting any any bill from the utility? You told me I was gonna be 100% offset. Well, you pull up this consumption monitoring, you say, hey, you're consuming more, right? 
which is fine, but it, you're consuming more. So you, having that data is very helpful for a homeowner to be able to manage their system a little bit better. Say, hey, you know, here's how much I'm producing. Here's how much I'm consuming. Looks like we, uh, we're consuming more than we want to be. And they can see down to the module level. This is all free for the homeowner. They do not need to pay for monitoring by any means. And they can see module level production, uh, how many kilowatt hours are being produced all from the, you know, the, their fingertips. And you guys as installers get access to uh, Enlightened Manager, which is a lot more detailed view of these systems. So that again, if there's ever an issue, we can troubleshoot, we can see, hey, what's going on? We're collecting data from these microinverters every 15 minutes we're looking at you know frequency and voltage and power output and temperature and all these data points that allow us to make sure hey are, is this system working as intended or or do we need some assistance right uh, so it's all all being monitored and it's all all the monitoring is free on that end and again what's what's pretty unique about Enphase is that it's all under one roof one company one brand name one warranty provider uh, for you and for the homeowner now, I mentioned on the storage side that we do have a sizing tool. It's very important to make sure that uh, when you are selling anything with backup, that systems are sized appropriately. And that's, again, the, the factors that you want to look at would be how much instantaneous power do we need to power the loads that the homeowner wants during that grid outage, as well as how long of an outage are they expecting, how long are they using those loads for, and as a result, how many kilowatt hours of capacity do we need to make sure we have as well? And so our sizing tool, it's free, it's on our website. Um, you can input some pretty basic information to help calculate the amount of kilowatt hours a day a homeowner might be using. And we have a system recommendation just saying, hey, here's how much solar and batteries you need, but you can get more in depth too. And uh, so when you're on the website, you hit this blue button here on the left, additional configuration. And you're going to get this this load tool pop up where you can you know we have different sections of essential appliances you see down here large appliances and this is a uh a slide not not the actual website so i can't play around with it but essentially you scroll down and you literally with the homeowner click on hey what loads do you want to back up and you hit click to back up right and as a result down here once you're done the system is going to say this is the amount of storage you need based on all the loads that you selected that you want to have for backup right and you can edit anything the quantity the power output of any of these loads to get as fine-tuned and as, as exact as you possibly can you can indicate the expected length of an outage right here so we can really fine-tune the kilowatt hour capacity need and then here on the bottom right again there, there's different factors um, PV size is not really uh, relevant for us anymore because we are having IQ8s on the roof. So with our, our previous generations with IQ7s, you also have to factor in the PV size with IQ8s. We don't anymore. So we actually, uh, this line should be gone, but you're still factoring energy, power, and again, any surge power. So what this system shows you is it'll highlight why is this recommending this battery system size? Oh, because this was, the, the backup power required uh, 4.8 kilowatts and we need a minimum of, of a 10 and a three to get us there, right? And if you change any of these around, the size system might change with it. And it's just gonna highlight, hey, which factor is the determining factor for what it's spitting out? That way, if a homeowner asks you like, hey, why do, why do I need 20 kilowatt hours or 40 kilowatt hours or whatever it may be, you just look here and say, oh, because we're trying to power on all these loads and we have a high power demand oh, you're trying to back up your house for 24 hours on battery alone, and so we need a lot of kilowatt hours to do that, right? You're gonna have that information is provided uh, because this is dynamic and it'll highlight that factor as you're playing around with that tool. Um, so again, please, all this is covered in, in further training on the Enphase University, but never hesitate to reach out to me uh, and we can go through things also individually as well. Um, we do, uh, you know, I don't have a slide for it here, unfortunately, but um, before anyone can install and commission a battery job or a sunlight backup job, any job with our IQ system controller, uh, you do need to be certified. We have a free online certification program. It's called the Enphase University, and I can send out a follow-up email to, to Baywatch to help distribute, uh, but 
it's it's free it's online you log in with your enlighten account if you're new to enphase enlighten is your your monitoring portal it's your enphase portal so you're going to log in with that account information and then we have uh three courses that are required for backup jobs it's a storage design course storage installation course and an iq8 installation course and when you complete those three you are then certified to commission one of our backup systems uh, and then we have a lot of other courses on there to, to peruse and to check and just to increase your knowledge on, on solar as a whole but specifically the Enphase system everywhere from generator integration to ct installation to you name it uh, we've got uh, a lot of courses on there to, to help you guys fine-tune and just continue to improve uh, the quality of your work and the quality for the homeowner um, so please make sure you're getting onto the Enphase university if you have any struggles with finding it or finding the right courses that you need my uh, again please email call or text um, I'll, I'll make sure my information gets out to every every one of the attendees here as well um, so I, i'm going to pause there again i you know we've got about 14 or so minutes left i just want to see if anyone has any specific questions about any of the iq8s uh any of the configurations that we spoke about or, or uh educational opportunities on the end phase university does, does anyone have anything particular uh, i got a question here how do you ensure a micro inverter doesn't fail short circuiting its ac output um how do you ensure that it doesn't fail you're saying just after install how do you make sure it's not it hasn't failed um well you know these they are we have the monitoring system right so you can always be looking at um at every single one of the microinverters you install and you can you know I, uh, again i don't have a slide for it but if you ever want we can jump on a call afterwards send me your your contact and we'll do a screen share but you can pull up all the data being reported from these microinverters so the microinverters communicate with our it's called our gateway the uh the NPA's gateway it's built into the combiner box or you can buy it alone if you're not using a combiner box uh, the microinverters communicate all data to the gateway via PLC or power line communications. That gateway does need to be connected to the cloud, so you can connect it to the homeowner's internet, hardwired or Wi-Fi. We also have optional cell modems, and I, you know if you're in an area with, with good or, or cell coverage, you're, you're fine. If you're in the sticks, you, you might be in an area without great cell coverage, but then that, that, that gateway is going to report it to the cloud, and you're going to be able to monitor everything very closely through the Enlightened Manager app. Right, so if there ever is an issue, if you're if you're seeing underperformance under a single microinverter or anything along that nature, let's dig into the the monitoring. Call customer support; they're able to see what happens. Maybe something needed a firmware update, which we can a lot of times do remotely. Uh, but we're we're doing everything through that monitoring portal. And we also have, uh, sorry. Can you please tell us about the generator course that you were talking about? Yeah, so we have a uh, we do have a generator course. I can, let me try to pull it up. I just need to see if my uh, um, I'm I'm new to this webinar platform. I don't know. Can you can you see my web browser, Matt? Or um, do I need to yes. reach? You can. Okay, great. So I'm going to log into the Enphase University, and I'll show you when you, when you log in. You're able to log in with the with your inline information. So mine, mine auto populates, right? When you come in, there's going to be a number of different courses. So first and foremost, uh, you've got your dashboard. If you hit catalog here on top, you're going to see a few things. One, you can select which type of system you want to install, right? So you asked about generator. So and boom, it tells you right here, these are the courses you need to make sure you have completed, right, to be able to install a generator uh, system. So if we click on the generator system, it's all video-based, it's all it's all web-based, um, but uh, it, it, you're, this, system, uh, this training is gonna walk you through the ins and outs of design, installation, and um, all the technical resources you would need for the generator course. Now, we also have, on our website so if you can still see the browser if you go to go to enphase.com and on the top you hit installers we have our documentation center right here so you have all these options to choose from you hit documentation and then you hit 
storage. We've got everything here from data sheets on every single one of our units. Uh, we have installation guides and manuals here. And then we also have something which we call uh, tech briefs, right? Tech briefs are more technical documents uh, that run through a lot of information about the given configuration or, or installation that you're trying to do. So we have one for generators as well, which walk through um, line diagrams or everything you would need for, for generators uh, integration here. In addition to that, we also have, I mentioned we have a list of, of compatible generators that list is on this tech brief as well, right? So it's a pretty hefty list. Uh, most common or most requested generators are on here. If they're not on here, you know, we have the parameters that the generator would need to, uh, to have for it to be compatible, but you would still need a call into end phase to have them look into it and add it. Because when you're trying to integrate a generator, I believe it'll be when you're commissioning the system, there's a drop down you choose the generator make and model off that so if it's not on this list but it meets these specs as a generator uh let let our team know reach out to me and I'll, I'll connect you with an engineer and we can uh see about adding it to to the list here um so, so the the training is is right here which you will need and the tech brief is is available right on our website And when you um, click on the catalog again, you'll see there's different tabs here. Certification program has a lot of the required trainings that you'll need for different configurations here as well. But then we have a lot of these qualification and standalone courses. There's almost no end to the learning opportunities. We have an amazing training team that puts out content all the time. Uh, so if you hit qualification courses, we've got our generator course. These two courses right here with the third generation of storage talks about that new 5P battery we touched upon briefly. Um, we have trainings on our load control unit. Uh, we have trainings on, on power control systems or PCS, which allow you to kind of limit the export out of that system controller and avoid needing main panel upgrades and, and a lot of good stuff. Uh, we have sunlight backup training. We, I mean, there, there's a lot on here. We, we also have sales trainings on here as well both for storage, for solar, as well as, as you see here on the left, EV charging. Um, so while you know we only have an hour right now together, we have a lot of opportunities for you guys to, again, continue to, to learn and, and, and get more information on all of our products right here on the Enphase University. So please uh, open up the university, click through, see which courses. The first time you ever enter the university, you're gonna have to request access to a course uh, that is our training team just doing a manual check to see that you are actually associated with a solar installer and not just a homeowner. So they're going to want to make sure you have your Enlightened account set up. Um, once you're approved, though, I think anytime you're requesting a new course, it should be automatic. And they are all video based. They You can kind of stop in the middle and, and pick up where you left off at another time if, if you don't have time to do it all in one shot. Uh, but it, it's all here on the Enphase University. Uh, you may even have some live sessions, uh, which would be more, I don't know, I don't see too many of those, but, um, but we do have, again, a lot of courses available for you here. We also have a YouTube channel, so if you're on YouTube, uh, go check out Enphase Energy. Uh, we also have Enphase Energy, I think it's Enphase Energy Training. We have two YouTube channels, one more corporate and one more about training, uh, which they cover a lot of kind of troubleshoot uh, topics that we get. They, they try to make some self-help videos and they've been putting new videos up almost every week at this point. Uh, so we have a lot of good resources uh, for you to continue to uh, to learn and, and get information from us. But again, you're, you're not on an island unless you are uh, in the West Coast or something like that, but you're not on an island. Please feel free to reach out to me. That was a bad joke. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or need to be pointed to any specific resource uh you know that we maybe didn't quite cover on this on this call odds are we have it and and we'd be more than happy to get you going and, and connect you with trainers engineers whatever you need to be successful we have a couple other questions here ashy uh yeah. in the sunlight power mode only off the grid how much output will the inverter supply 100 of the module production or is it rated down to a lower percentage 
It's a great question. So it, it's going to depend on what that power need in that house is at the moment, right? And so if you're, unless you're backing up those four circuits, you've got your fridge, your Wi-Fi outlets and lights, right? And you walk into the room and you turn on the lights. Now your, your, your load in the house, your, your demand in the house goes up. The mic solar if there's enough sunlight to power that that let's call it you're in the middle of the day or whatever it may be and there's good production the iqh on the roof are going to ramp up production to match that instantaneously right so like they are able to ramp production up and then when you turn the lights off they need to ramp back down because there's no battery there's nowhere for that excess energy to go so they're able to ramp up and down uh really instantaneously because the chip in that aid is so fast right it's able to um it's really able to process changes within the 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 environment within nanoseconds so it's able to do that now again the limitation there is is there enough sunlight to uh is there enough sunlight to to power that load right so if we go back to looking at this slide we have a day like this where you know you turn on that light and there's enough sunlight so you can power that on when you turn it off they ramp down and you're fine or is it a cloudy day like it's I just heard thunder outside my window. I'm about to get thunderstorm. So am I going to have a day like this, right? So the IQ8 can ramp up and down within what's available from that that module, uh, but they're able to do that on their own, which is really cool. And uh, what's the rough timeline for the 5P battery for Canada? Uh, my personal goal is within Q3, uh, but I will have to get updated uh, updates to to Beiwa to, you know, to to share with everyone. Um, uh, I, I don't know how long that will take, but my personal goal is within the quarter. Great. And do the combiners come with CTs or purchase separately? The combiners come with CTs. So the gateway is already wired uh into it, within the combiner so you have production cts that are already wired within the combiner it also comes with a pair of consumption cts in the box so you do not need to purchase that separately great that's it for questions all right excellent so uh you know I, again i know we're, we're at the hour i don't have a hard stop i'm happy to stay on and, and answer any questions that still might pop up otherwise uh, i'm gonna share some follow-up resources with Baywa to help distribute uh, hopefully with my contact information. Please, if we haven't spoken yet, please introduce yourself. Make sure I have your contact info and let me know what else we can do to continue the support. And uh, I guess one last question. Enphase only has lithium batteries or do you have AGM batteries? Yeah, great question. No, our batteries are all LFP. They're lithium iron phosphate. And so, you know, the, within the lithium ion battery category, there are two chemistries. There's nickel, magnesium, cobalt, or NMC, uh, and LFP, which is lithium iron phosphate. So, so we use lithium iron phosphate. The difference between, or one of the differences between NMC and LFP is, is regarding safety. You know, there's no thermal runway with an LFP battery. So if, let's say that uh, the unit is compromised, or for whatever reason it's punctured, or you know, you, something falls on it, or car bumps into it, whatever it may be, there's no fire. Uh, there's no risk of fire if that unit breaks, where NMC can experience thermal runaway, and if that unit is compromised, can become a chemical fire that's really hard to put out, right? So uh, there are a number of LFP battery options on the market, uh, but that is the chemistry that we that we use. Great. And yeah, thanks, Ashley. Really appreciate you taking the time to educate us all here on the Enphase product. Uh, Enphase is a tremendous partner. Uh, product is very rock solid. Their, their support and uh, follow-up are second to none in the industry uh, from my experience. Just a couple of things on our way out. This was recorded once again. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel. Please go there, sign up. Love to have you on there. It'll also come out in the next, uh, in the August newsletter as well. Uh, if you haven't signed up for our web shop yet, you can find all the spec sheets, pricing, inventory levels, install manuals, uh, see all your orders in there. It's a tremendous uh, resource if you're not using it already. If you do have follow-up questions, just let us know. Lots of sales reps standing by uh, to help you out and uh, we're always happy to pull uh, and phase in uh, with us as well. So once again, thank you to everybody for taking the time to be with us here today. We truly do appreciate it and hope you all have a great rest of the day.